is the main part of Nigbe Nature Reserve. So the grass that we're standing on is a salt marsh. So those are plants that can tolerate being inundated by tides every day. They're really specialised plants. And then we've got really extensive mudflats, what I call the big bird restaurant. So it's absolutely stuffed full of wee beasties that waders and wildfowl like to come and eat, especially in the winter. This is where the sea and the land come together. So where the, the sea comes in, it's actually here it's held back by this sea wall and on the other side of the wall we've got um, agricultural land. You think it's really natural and actually what it is is the product of a lot of human intervention and most of it is quite natural. So the mudflats are natural and most of this salt marsh is. But, but what, is ha what has happened is that we've actually stopped the salt marsh from being as far inland as it should be and should want to be. And what we forget is that salt marsh is like a natural flood defence. So it absorbs lots of water, it absorbs the wave energy where you've got a nice big salt marsh like this. There's a lot, it's like a natural sponge, so it absorbs a lot of that energy and actually protects the wall and protects the land behind it. And what's happening with sea level rise is that we're losing some of that forward edge of the salt marsh and it's getting squeezed up against the wall and then we have less of that natural defence for our important land that's behind it. So this bit of wall was built in the 1950s. The poor farmer spent years just trying to keep the sea out of the wall, but really it was a losing battle. Where we are now was an area of land that was always flooded by the sea and separating it from the sea was never really going to work very well. So what we've done is restore those natural processes and work with what nature wants to do rather than try to battle against it. So this is one of the two breaches um, in the seawall here at Nig Bay. So there were two holes were dug in the wall in uh, 2003 and uh, they're both, they're, at that time they were both about 20 metres wide and that was to let the sea back into this area that had previously been flooded for the first time in about 50 years. We know with um, sea level rise and climate change that we are, will lose some salt marsh in Nig Bay and the thousands of birds that come here for the winter need somewhere to feed and they need somewhere to roost. So we were acting now in order to replace those habitats for them to be available in the future. We also know that salt marsh has a really big role to play in um, flood defence and with um, sort of water storage and with mitigating the impacts of, um, of storms. So on the really biggest tides and in the stormiest conditions, a lot of seawater is held in this field. And uh, a, a third reason which has sort of come to the fore more recently is, is carbon storage. So salt marshes are a really big store of carbon. Um, estuaries are fed by rivers and so sediments are being washed down rivers every day and what salt marshes do is they trap those sediments and plants grow on top of them and that locks in a lot of carbon. It has direct sort of benefits for us as a nature, nature conservation organisation and as a nature reserve, but we're also doing things for the wider environment and for wider benefits as well. What we have now is really good quality salt marsh, but we're also do, you know, working with other organisations now to look at things like the carbon storage and try to learn a bit more about that so that if this can be done elsewhere, not just for nature conservation, but for, to help the fight against sea level rise and climate change, then we will have that information. I think if folks um, 
quite often when they see a salt marsh they just see a sort of grassy expanse it's sometimes a bit muddy and maybe doesn't look very interesting once you're in it you just really get a sense of how wild it is and is that even better when it's a salt marsh you help make of course i mean none of none of these species were here when i started working for the rspb so to be here 20 years later in something that i've helped and lots of other people have helped recreate and then you're sitting here on a nice sunny day listening to skylarks that weren't here before. I mean, that's really rewarding.